All right, guys, just before the weekly review begins, I just want to point out that this is the Discord channel. Um, this is where I upload daily what you are seeing right here. I mean, you are seeing the weekly review. And that, that's the market shot where every single day I discuss what I'm doing and what I'm not doing, right? So you just double click right here. I mean, and you see everything. I won't be having a position open. I tell you about the news releases. I tell you what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, my bias. And uh, so far, nobody is unhappy about it. The website is in the description. It's at wop.com Tesla Trading right here. And you can be a sub you can subscribe for a month only, for three months and for six months. Just know that if you buy the three months or the six months, you also have one-on-one -on -one calls with me, okay? If you buy the six months, you have three of those. And then, of course, if you buy the three months, you have one. So thank you for listening. And... Uh, you can see the review. Well, you cannot really see it, but yeah, there it is. Everybody's happy about it. Cheers. All right, guys, weekly review for week number 15. This is the preparation video that I've prepared for you in Discord. And see, yes, I'm going to be uploading this weekly review also for the guys on YouTube and technically Twitter as well. And the preparation was bearish for Forex. That means I'm looking for Euro and GU shorts. Um, Mainly, okay. It doesn't mean that I cannot take any long. It just means that um, I want to see the market go lower overall for the week, modestly bearish for the U.S. bonds and modestly bullish for indices. Now, um, technically on FX, I was right. The week was anything but bullish, if not for the first few first two days. And that's classic. It's a classic run up into a premium to just sell off. And uh, modestly bullish for indices, well, that didn't really pan out. Um, we had some days which were where buys were absolutely fine. Take, for example, the Nasdaq trade that I took on this day right here. And no, I didn't hold the previous day's high on all accounts, but this one was a monster trade. Like, geez, like. 240 handles to the upside, crazy moves. But then, as you can see, a spoiler alert, ES could never close within. So, again, this is really telling you I'm running up here just to run stops. Poof, very slow. And bonds, I said modestly bearish. And yeah, it was bearish. It was bearish, it moved quite nicely. And uh, well, ZB was the one that moved the least. Because it has to go through this imbalance and it had to play with it. The other the other two didn't have anything. So it was a low resistance liquidity to run to the next objective. Which very quickly, I don't really have an objective up here. If not for this imbalance up here for ZN. And ZF being the weakest, this imbalance is going to completely eat it. And go for the next level of liquidity or imbalance. And we have an imbalance in here which got fully tapped into here. So I'm looking for the low to go. And the low went spectacularly. But this review is going to be mainly on the trades I've taken. I ended up the week with zero losses. Talking about Forex specifically. Because I had a few scratches, a few losses. And some very good wins on uh, futures. Mainly on ES and NASDAQ. And some really tiny scalps on uh, um, ZN and ZF. And what else? Well, Forex wise... It went, it went very, very well. So, um, 5.9 hour for the week. Everything was called out except one trade. But again, it was in the same direction of the second trade I've added. And let's get started with the review. All right. Why was I bearish? Well, what I liked right here, as you know, was that the fact that we tapped into the CB. We tapped into the CB here and we already reacted. For good measure, they went higher again, okay? Trapping everybody long at the breakout of above previous week's high. And then they sent chart lower aggressively. They came back in for rebalancing. And then they sent it lower till the new level of liquidity resting, which was previous week's low, the February low, and then this low, okay? It's a daily low. You cannot see that on the weekly chart. And Dixie-wise, well, we just went straight up. I don't really see anything specific there, if not for how we did the very thing I hate. If I am bearish this asset, this is not what I, I want to see. If we are agging this for value gap, okay, this CB in here, 
we go as support, as our resistance, move away, we go again and we start playing within these bodies right here, or this specific range of imbalance, that's bad. That's bad because it means it's going to potentially run the other side. And so it did very, very rapidly as well. Jiu had a little bit of a larger CB, therefore it didn't technically need to either overshoot it or completely fill it. And we didn't completely fill it and we broke lower into this low, which is also the tiny imbalance I discussed, I don't know how many weeks ago. Now, that's the longer term drone liquidity and it's now fulfilled. And you can see how should I ever take this level. We tapped into that beautifully and we had a nice bounce. I'm going to call that weekly busy closure. All right. Making sure it's visible everywhere. All right. Now, daily chart. This is what we can see. Well, we tapped here for NFP, we broke higher, we came back higher again, nice rejection already at the high, this is what technically is a swing failure pattern by Tom Dant, if you really think about it, even though he likes deep swings more than anything else. And we have this order block right here, which is never invalidated, okay? It's never invalidated for the simple reason that we have to close through the mean threshold. You never do that, so this is still viable, I think. A PDA, okay? The fact that it got tapped in, uh, into twice, well, it's not like a probability gap where many times having too many taps really means it's not working. For order blocks and breakers, they can have multiple ones because they are blocks in nature and they work a little bit differently. And uh, in here, we have the same thing, okay? We run the low, we attack it, we immediately move away, and then nice displacement to the upside for CPI. Quickly checking what we had for this week going on. We had, well, not so important because I don't trade NZD. We had CPI, the most important one, and we had a Monday and a Tuesday of quote unquote manipulation, higher triggering buy stops, and then they send it lower. The 10 year bond auction, the 30 year bond auction, and then we have PPI, main refinancing rate for euro, euro rates, and then finally. These are not as important. We also had unemployment claims. So, majority of the volatility was gonna was going to be seen, of course, for CPI because it's the heaviest hitter for the week. And then, of course, this has its level of importance because it's the rates for euro, and they're put, putting that in contrast with what the Fed is doing. And then the rest can be easily continue, uh, continuation lower up until the next objective. I'll be honest, I did not expect Friday to be that explosive to the downside, okay? I didn't. I really thought we were going to chill for it, and I kind of took the day off. I was wrong on it. I was definitely wrong on it, but the rest of the days was pretty good. Now, dropping into the H1, we can see a little bit of the days in here, and we have Euro starting off with a small consolidation, lots of SMPs in here with GBP. And then we sent, we went higher. I know I have lots of levels in here, and it looks like a carnival fast. But bear with me. This can be deleted. We have a CB in here. We have a swing high. We attack that perfect respect of the bodies. Breaks lower. Comes back in into the weekly CB. Taps that CPI sends sends this lower very aggressively. We run stops right here just before taking previous week's low. Tap into that, we break all the way down for ECB rates, auto block again, breaker technically speaking as well, because we have a high, low, higher high. And you might say, okay, fine, sure, that's a breaker, whatever, but what is really this move higher going to? The eyes alone? Nah, no, it's not that specifically. And the other question might be, but why isn't this probably gap being filled? And that's because time frame hierarchy. The H4 is more important than the H1. H4 as an institutional order flow entry drill right here, meaning that we don't need to come back all the way higher. On top of that, this PC right here, hello, it's a BPR. Why? It cut through this PC, which is potential support, like nothing. So on the other side, it can become resistance. It taps that beautifully. And it continues delivering lower and lower and lower. 
Okie dokie. Um, I'm gonna go through each and every single day now. This is the long part, but bear with me. I had at the beginning of the week a bearish bias for the weekly range, which doesn't mean I'm gonna be looking for shorts the very first day. Sometimes it happens, but it's not always the case. Was I looking for shorts this day? Yeah, I was. For the simple reason that I saw that the market could go lower into a discount, maybe this order block right here with a little bit of ABC, the same thing for GBP, and then go higher, okay? Because we had very clean highs. I didn't see that much of a drop. Yet, I took one trade, which made 1.8R on GBP USD, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. All right, so I'll uh, place it here. That's the trade entering at the order block plus a fair value gap, which you cannot see on this feed for some reason. It didn't print a fair value gap, and then I went out at these lows down here. I'll tell you why these lows specifically. Okay, let's build the idea. So I wanted to see a drop lower. All right, we do have this consolidation right here blah 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 you can see that this went lower this went a little bit higher all right i really need to drop on the m5 to show that though and that's on a monday so yes sir first of all i'm gonna keep it like this because i need to explain that the odds of the asian range not being tapped either at the low or the high from 2 to 12 is 0%. Okay, this means that we pretty much always, okay, doesn't mean gamble and risk 4.98% uh, uh, of a prop firm on this idea or anything else to always use a profit risk management, but it simply means that it almost it never happens as far as I've backtested. That Asia is not taking either to the high, to the low, or both. Okay, this is important because this premise is really built to my GBP USD trade. Okay, very important. And as you can see, in this day, we took the low and then we took the high. We took the low and then we took the high. And that's classic because Asia usually is a consolidation. Now, here's the beauty we go higher and here, higher again, and then we break lower attacking the low. Okay, fair enough. At the same time, what's going on here? Well, GBPUSD is rallying back higher, but why is Euro stopping right here, and why is GBP going higher? Well, let me break that for you. And again, I a little bit hate trading view, but that's what we have to deal with. This red line and this red line, they are the same anchor point. And I have to show what it is. This is the very beginning of the BC, right here, okay? BC created on Thursday with the confirmation of disclosure. And the same thing in here. So that's a daily level, okay? We pay attention to these levels, at least I personally do. And then on a Monday, this is what we can see. We can see that for Euro, we hang in there and we use that as a inflection point, higher, lower, higher, lower. We are playing around this daily level, maybe for accumulation, maybe for distribution. It doesn't matter for now, but we are staying in there. And notice what's going on in GBPUSD. It missed that level by a little bit. And then on the second pass higher, which important, didn't take the in range low. It attacks that, it taps into that, it completely fills this for value gap, and then it breaks lower. Now, Instrument selection. This is how I do it. If an asset makes a higher high and I want to go short, do I take that one? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Because what I care about is the displacement on the right side of the curve. So if you are a little bit aware of market maker X models theory, there is a left side of the curve, there is a right side of the curve. Technically, the left side is the manipulation up to a premium or a discount. And then we have the distribution. Okay, that's why it's somewhat similar to say AMD. Okay, it's, it starts from a consolidation that goes up to a premium and then breaks lower, or vice versa from a consolidation it breaks down into a discount, 
then technically clears out the original consolidation. Okay, I'm not, I don't, don't want to go there too much in depth. It's stuff that you can easily find online, to be fair. But on this day, we had the following. Now, in terms of displacement, do you think that we had more displacement to the downside? Euro USD or GBP USD? Visually speaking, they are quite similar, even though I have a slight preference for GBP, but then we have to study the details. This imbalance right here passed at 725 and created officially right here is not present on Euro USD. Therefore, I'm going to be taking GBP USD because we have the fair value gap in here too. And from a bigger note, we have a CB, a CB. We have a CB and a CB. With the only difference that this candle came back in, showing some little bit of strength and not really willing to drop that much, this candle created a down close candle. Okay, this means that this is a little bit weaker, and that's how I study the re uh, relationship between relative strength in correlated asset. Then we have a break lower, we have a CB, that's my entry right there. What am I looking for? What I'm looking for is the sell side resting in here. But why, if I had a swing low, say during this time of day down here, would I have aimed for that one? And the answer is no. The reason is. I know that the Asian range is going to be targeted. I don't know if a swing low in here, say at this level, is going to be targeted. Okay, it might easily get there. I might get a new, uh, might get a little bit of extra R. I don't care. I don't care in that case because that becomes a discretionary level. This is a static level that it's formed every single day, and it's a good anchor point. And that's the trade. Now, beautiful thing about this day is. Euro, since it already took the sell side liquidity of the Asian range, does it need to go lower again if it's somewhat bullish? No. Therefore, Euro doesn't go uh, lower anymore. We take the London range as well for GBP right here. So we have London liquidity as in range liquidity. That's a beautiful collapse of a short. And then we start going higher. We have session SMT. And this market keeps pumping up. I had a buy limit for euro usd which never got triggered and the buy limit for euro why euro in that case displacement wise it was acting quite well and i never got it it was on the m15 and it never happened it was down here and then we have a classic distribution so we have a london open to london close profile which fulfills at the h1 cb right here all right, so that's day one, 1 1.8R, beautiful trade, beautiful scalp. If I didn't have relative strength of my side and I went short Euro USD, I wouldn't have been able to make 1.8R because I would have still waited for the collapse or the, the attacking of some level of sell side liquidity. And the sell side liquidity I had available at that time for Euro was the London low and it never got triggered. Then, of course, aiming for this eye made sense, but that's a completely different story. What else? Um, setup wise, this is decent. Okay, for this day still. This nice PC tapping into there with a full closure or consequent encroachment, really up to you which one you want to be picking. And a stop down here, aiming for the full closure right there. It's not a lot of pips, but it's pretty consistent. Okay, because we have the top here in the CB, a top here. And for me, BC now, it's probably gonna run. I don't really like taking trades this late in time of day, but sometimes it's very profitable to do that. Okay, now daily chart, because we have to build a narrative there for the next day, right? That's how Monday began. We are so close to previous week's high that it would be foolish not to say previous, you know what, maybe we're gonna draw there today. And that's the day where I made the most amount of money. And uh, let me break down the idea behind that. I had a drone liquidity previous week's high. So I have my daily bias already. I full know that this weekly CB right here could be taken, but maybe respected. Therefore, I'm not the guy that takes the buy and looks for these highs. Because we are again in a weekly CB. 
we have to see a weekly closure or at least even a daily closure which is quite aggressive before even thinking about having a low resistance to the ice. Without even mentioning that Jiu is still in the process of filling that imbalance. So absolutely not. So bias is bullish. If we have a bullish bias, we should be seeing what? A day that opens, then maybe drops a little bit lower, and then it goes higher for the expansion. It takes the drawn liquidity to the buy side, whatever, and then stops. Okay? Maybe stops and consolidates, maybe stops and reverses, maybe continues and we were wrong, but we could have potentially made money nonetheless, okay? Now, this day, I'll show you the execution. I've taken it on EURUSD. And I'm quite, quite proud about this trade, to be fair. Because I was able to add with the same size. That was beautiful. The first trade, well, you cannot see the risk to reward, so my bad. Because I've deleted it because it was a mess. But it's 1.3R and 2.2R. So... The 2.2 R is the trade down here, and the 1.3 is this entry right here. My stop was not down here, it was a little bit lower, and it never got taken, and then it delivered very nicely. And that was my final TP, which never got triggered, and I collapsed down here with trade, my, my, my trailed stop loss, and voila, it panned out. For 3.5 R, sticking to the TP, I wouldn't have made more than that. And I have a way, which I want to discuss, on how I could have optimized this exit up here. And it was my lack of focus. So I don't even have to delete it. I'll just go here. And that's all I have to do. Euro USD. Don't need anything else for now. We are context, okay? That's the next day. That's Tuesday. We are inside of the CB. Inside of imbalances. Until we clearly, clearly break away from... We are technically in a consolidation. And what I'm saying by that is we are inside. We respect the upper level. We respect the lower level. We respect the, upper, the lower level in here. Okay? That's what I mean. And you can see the same behavior happening in here. Anything outside of these ranges is deviations that maybe come back in. Okie dokie. Now, H4. I don't cycle into very weird time frames most of the time, I really stick to the classic ones. Only weird one that I have is the H2, which is used to see if any every delivered rebalance on the H1 is, is there or not. But other than that, this is the context. We have, a CA, we have an H4 BC, which is also an institutional order flow entry level. Okay, We tap into that, we are very close to buy side liquidity. We don't need a, a deep retracement. That's a, actually a very bad sign to see a, a big retracement just before a liquidity pull. It should be going there with speed. And on the H1, remember where we are, okay? We are in here, dealing, blah, blah, blah. So, this day right here, let me go into the M5 and show you what I was thinking. The Sorry, I know there are a lot of colors, but bear with me. I need the sessions. This level is the M15 BC closure. Well, I mean, let me show you. M15 BC closure. Can we all agree? It's the M15 BC closure. Here, it's totally plausible to expect a potential reversal. Okay, Because when we feel imbalances, we many times have bounces. But this bounce, before I can ever take a trade, needs to show me the displacement. So the sequence is, I have a key level doesn't have to be always higher time frame. It taps into that, and then you show me displacement, and sure enough, I'm going to be joining the, the trend in that case. If it's a loss, it's a loss, but it's a loss in the system, okay? Right here, what do we have, though? We tap into the level, we go higher, sure, nobody's denying that, and we tap into this imbalance with this order block, which is a little bit of a roadblock, and do we create a displacement to the upside? No, we don't. There is no M5 imbalance. And sure, I could start arguing, oh, but this candle you can delete because this is an imbalance right here. And this, no, 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 don't do any of that. If the prevailing gap is not there in the time frame you're looking at, odds are it's simply not there. Okay? And if you want to be doing weirder stuff, you can do that, but do it on the higher time frame, not in the lower time frame where you got to take the decision. And you got to be almost, almost black and white. You, you want to be... To have some level of discretion because that helps, 
some level of statistics that, that help too. So we don't have the displacement, we start slowly eroding, blah blah blah, and then we come back lower, we tap now into the H4 level, so we have a new opportunity, or at least I'm giving a new opportunity for the market to show me the formation of EBC, because I'm looking for longs. And there we have it. We have continuous move to one side, which are usually the best value gaps, if you ask me. We have the BC, we have the auto block that run also the stops, and that's an entry. Did I get an entry in here? No, I didn't. But I got a little bit above this level, let me, let me show you again, right here, because this dotted line is the daily open. Now, when we think about the daily open, and, and my bias is bullish, well, I'm sorry, when you think about the power of three concept and the bias is bullish, we should be seeing the open, the low formation, and then the distribution higher, and then whatever it can do. It can retrace all the way like it did in here, or stay up there, okay? So I'm technically entering here out, out after the potential low has been made. So I took the trade here, stop down here. I want a large stop if I'm taking a day trade. I don't want to be stressing over, oh, this is the nailing point. I need. It's okay. I have 8 pips, 9 pips, 10 pips, whatever. It depends on the volatility, of course, and the pair. And then beautiful expansion higher. What I remember, again, what was I looking for? Previous week's high. When we went all the way back higher in here, study how we beautifully, let me see, bring to front, yeah, we beautifully tapped into the upper portion of the weekly CB, we came all the way back down. What I was expecting was well, a reaction from, geez, trading view, I hate you, a reaction from this higher time frame level coupled with the this small imbalance in here which got completely disrespected and yet had a winner because my stop loss was at efficient price action which was down here all right so even you don't always need perfect entries sure that's definitely better and if i had taken the trade right here with a stop down there i would have made so much more right but the point is if you have a strong bias and you want to be participating in the move, I don't think it's so wrong, assume, uh, assuming you have more than one R, okay? If it's very stuck in your direction, sure, you want to be making the most amount of money possible, but at the same time, using that logic, maybe you would have had the buy limit at the full closure and you never get the full closure. So, uh, find the sweet spot. And there, what do we see? Where we see something beautiful in my opinion. We break lower very hard. We come there, we start consolidating, we displace higher. That's what I was referring um, so b before for um, what was that? For Dixie. Remember when I was discussing about the weekly? How I don't like to see if I'm bearish, I don't want to see a CB on the other side being quote unquote act. Okay, where the bodies are respecting and we're going up and down inside of it. Because that means this market is going on the other side of the range. And that's exactly what happened. Um, you can see that they've also called this breakaway. And the reason is the same. The white, the black lines in here is just the same delineation as these shaded area. Okay, they're the same levels. We could have easily tapped into that. It was not necessary. Because this should be an institutional order flow entry drill because we have a BPR, CB, BC. See how they're pretty much exactly the same? CB, BC, same amount of displacement. We have trapped liquidity down here. We should never come back down here again if it's bullish. And then it delivers beautifully. Um, the scalp idea, which was this one right here, absolutely, I take everything from at the previous week's high. The other way I could have really improved my exit was really having the paying close attention to this H1CB and more specifically if I was more focused on Dixie I would have seen that Dixie was hitting previous week's low exactly right here at uh, 850 and my collapse would have been anything in this upper part, side of the range so let's assume 830 
that would have been already a better exit than I could have made some extra R. It is what it is. I, I just missed it. Um, this day gave me 3.5 R. 3.5 R, I was more than happy, more than content. Maybe that's an issue because I could have pushed even more and made so much more. But at the end of the day, we gotta be content with enough sometimes. So that's a wrap for for this for this day right here. Let me check something else. Okay, all right. And then of course we break lower for the London close. I mean, I'm saying of course because it's hindsight. I did not expect that necessarily. Okay. And what we have now we have pure perfection really really perfection black lines is the same as the h1 imbalance that i've marked here for euro okay sorry for using different colors but if i start overlapping many other levels we are going we're going nuts as you can see i'm mostly using imbalances and if you use imbalances in the weekly daily h4 h1 you can do everything. You can frame setup, you can frame market profiles, you can frame everything you want, always. And without it, it tells you all you need to know. Don't fucking trade. <laughs> That's simple. The displacement is really important. But here's the beauty. Remember, okay? I know some of you are not familiar with the way I color my stuff, and that's okay. But what do we have right here? This purple line remains the weekly CB. I'm going to show that again. Weekly CB right here. Study how we broke through. It stayed for there very little, just for the rebalancing purpose, and it broke lower, and we came back in here. So my trade, my best trade was in the manipulation phase. If we are technically really want to go that route, okay? Because it was that. But since I know the statistics, the previous week's lie is gonna be taken. Of course, I'm gonna be taking the trade. If this happened, if this happened, if this were to happen, I don't know, on Wednesday for next week, I'd take it. I'd be taking it anyway. It's a very, very good trade, and it's one of my consistent ones. But again, what do we have here? Well, now technically we have trapped liquidity, so that that's a level where we can place our stop should we ever participate on CPI. I did not take part on CPI, and I kind of regret. Because taking a short before CPI, everybody say it's gambling. Sure, okay, it's it's more risky. But again, if you're taking a stop with a stop of 40 pips, guys, and we're expecting a massive move of 100 pips, that still remains a 2.5 R. Okay, and if you have a 40 pip stop is a stop loss, the odds of being slipped a lot is quite quite low. Okay study but what i want to show you is this beautiful beautiful level of precision where the bodies are perfectly respecting that we are weaking into the order block on the daily and then we just the sell-off has been nuts okay and of course if if we were to had no no cpi okay and the market wanted to go lower anyway this level of imbalance right here i would have used as an inversion level maybe top Come back in, and then if you break lower, go short till this level down here or the next level of imbalance. Since this is a red, really high impact news, it cut through everything. Everything. Here's the weekly open, which got tested after Monday's close. Statistics are pretty high that this level is retested. We're talking about 78%. Beautiful break, right? Um, uh, in terms of engagement, I want to show you some. My plan really was to see a little bit of a run higher for Euro, not to decide necessarily, and GBP um, taking the high. GBP never took the high, and this one only went for this internal range liquidity, but let's think about it. The rejection block per se, okay, which would have to be this area I'm highlighting, it's not an internal range liquidity play. It's an external range liquidity play already. So technically, GBP ran the buy side, and Euro didn't, okay? Or should I say, GBP went for external, the rejection block, Euro stayed within the range, internal range liquidity. That's, that remains an SMT, in my opinion. 
Absolutely, I'm convinced of that. It's not only about swing highs, swing lows. Beautiful break lower. And I've, I've only taken one trade this day. Okay, let me pick it up. The trade is on GBP USD. I'll tell you also why. I didn't take it with full 1 hour exposure. I've only taken it with 0 0.5. Um, that's an issue. An issue in the sense that I'm so up. Why, I'm not, why am I pushing less size is unknown for me. And as you can see, I didn't even take it to full TP. There is a reason for that. And that's a risk management uh, reason. It's not... Oh, I'm so scared I want to close it. No, no, I had to do it because we were going to have CAD rates. I am in a short. The spread can really widen quite a bit also in GBPUSD. I don't want to be caught stupidly and lose guaranteed money in this case because I would have just clicked and get the money. And then it continues a lot more and that I did not expect at the time. But now in hindsight, it makes sense. I'm going to show you why. So here's the trade and the logic behind it. We are okay. We are inside of this imbalance. Let me make sure I'm not saying something stupid. 290 to 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's uh, that's the correct one. Awesome. We broke lower. This is remain CPI day, okay? And GBP went into this imbalance, which I wanted to see at the very beginning of the week. Fair enough. These levels are usually retested. I don't have to be tested when I say that. It comes back in and it's move away. This is what I call a failure to launch. If the market wanted to reverse in here, it would have show, shown me that. And it's not showing me that. When I go into the M5, because I had to build the narrative first. Look what's going on. We go there beautifully. We tap. We come back in. And a simple M5 institutional EUFED taps into and the market breaks lower. Now, what do I have right here? I have the nice order block right here. We can usually use the wick, the body, or what I how I like to use it. It's used the full value gap. And this shaded area in uh, light blue is the H1BC, which is now broken through. Okay, bodies are closing through. And it's now an inversion level. That's exactly the high. Crazy, right? And then I have a little bit of consolidation in here. And I've collapsed it here fully. My TP was at this low. That low was taken, sure. But remember, we had CAD rates. This, I could see the spread already going higher. I wanted to be out. So 9.45 in here. Then we cut through beautifully. And we consolidate. And we keep on pressing lower and lower and lower. Also attacking previous week's low. Despite having attacked previous week's high here on a... On a Tuesday, okay. So Tuesday here, Wednesday there. Lots of volatility outside week. Those are not that common, but here we are. Um, again, that's the trade idea. Um, sh I'm just going to show that again. It's not even a one R. I mean, I couldn't have gotten really a one R with a one to one because it was zero fifty exposure. But the entry is pretty neat. It's right when it's going up, and I'm collapsing as it breaks lower. In terms of pips, it was decent as well, because um, here to here, I mean, it's 20. Nobody's complaining about that. And there, then we have Thursday. Thursday, again, I've only taken one trade. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I've taken a total of five trades this week, which is a little bit below my standard. Usually, I get one to two every single day. But I've, I'm skipping trading the London session as much. I'm focusing more on New York. And you know why? I have more edge in New York. <laughs> I have more edge. I make more money. I'm not performing too well on London. I don't care to trade London. Very simple. Um, this Jew trade gave me 0.4R. I am glad that I've collapsed it. And there is a reason. This is a perfect example of trade management. And that's why I think... That the TP or stop loss mentality, at least for me, doesn't work. So more than willing to skip the London session in this case also because it's ECB rates. I don't want to be trading euro. I know that TC could potentially consolidate a bit. We do have some moves higher, higher and lower, but zero direction. Now, my thinking was the following. 
um, there is previous day's low in here and there is previous day's high all the way back up here. I'm not ever gonna be betting on this one going up there. Okay, I can do with I can do that in indices, not so much in forex. But what's going on here? Uh, yeah. So we have a market, a pro clover, sure. We have the news release right here at 8:38, 15. We had lots of news. I mean, let me show you. 8:15, 8:30, 8:45, and then this one doesn't really matter. Okay. So we have a nice spike low over here for euro. You can see also based on the bodies which one is strongest. GBP is not having closure with the bodies down here. This one has has been doing that. I don't want to be going long euro. I want to be going long GBP. What am I looking for? First of all, I'm looking for the London high. And even before that, I need to shift the trade. That's GBP. That's my long. And I've collapsed it down here for again 0.4 R. And this right here is another sell limit which I had, but as, and I placed right here, and I never got enough of a retracement to really go short attacking previous days low. But that trade would have panned out as well. And that was a beautiful one, and I went I went in with full one R risk exposure. This one too, to be fair. Uh, let's break it down more in depth. Okie dokie. What do I see right here? Well, my expectation was the following. Remember, I wanted to see this H1BC CB being filled. It never happened. But why didn't that happen? It was not so much. Oh, well, sorry. I need to. Sh I know why. What am I saying? White line right here. It's the BC, the very origin of the BC, and that already got filled in. Okay, fantastic. Remember that if we have a close through, like we had right here on Wednesday, the 10th of April, then on this level right here, on a retest from below, is potentially resistance. Do we know it's resistance 100%? No, but it's potential resistance. So if I'm taking a long and, I, and the price is reaching towards that level and it's respecting that very nicely, I want to be out of my trade. So I know it's not really visible right here. I'm going to change color. Give me a second. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to make it uh, purple and also thicker if I can so that I can show you on a MetaTrader. And uh, voila. So th this is the same level, okay? A level right there and I'm closing my trade after I, I saw the respect of the daily level which is now inversion I don't want to be in this trade anymore and if I can get me into shorts so going into it again I see this tap in here I see another tap in here and I'm getting long right here why am I getting long right there well first of all I'm seeing perfect respect of this level which is an M15 CB and and I have a trigger given by my friend Yuri USD to go long because I'm seeing SMT between correlated assets. This is going lower as this is going higher. So let me get long. Momentum trade from year to year again 15 20 pips were viable. It just didn't happen. And I've collapsed it, made money as soon as I saw tap. Okay, this is not a good sign. I'm out. And that's the... Let's just say that that's a very good exit compared to what happened afterwards. And then, the reason why I wanted to go short is, remember, context. Okay, always context. So, so key. This is the low. And it's previous day's low. It quite... Freq uh, it's quite... What can I say? It has very good odds that we are going to see previous days high, previous days low, or both taken, okay, intraday, or within the 24-hour cycle that Forex uh, trades on. So if I'm starting to see that we have a failure up here, we took by side liquidity, we are dripping lower, all I'm looking for is what is my next objective? 
and its previous day's low stacked with the February low. So I want to get in shorts and sure. Me asking for this CB because remember, if this is true that it's a market maker sell model, ideally I want to be getting in on the left side of the curve. I want to be planting the down close candle before they move up. Okay, that's mitigation. Um, but at the same time, we broke lower so much, we cut through this PC level. So this level right here is going to become potentially a BPR. BC up, CB down. That should have been my entry. In hindsight, of course, because my entry was up here. Entry here, stop at efficient price action. So this is pretty efficient because we trade back and forth. And this is a breakaway gap. No fucking way we get up there unless it's bad, it's bullish. And then look for previous day's low, which comes in at this level right here, plus an extra because we have a sell side liquidity pool on February low. That's a 1.7R. Nobody's complaining about that. My entry, if it were to get triggered, was a massive 3R. Very, very good 3R. I never got that. And then I, did, I didn't have any expectation for this day. And it traded so fucking well. It traded so well. It kept pressing lower. London had a massive run. Again, I'm not trading London. So when it came to New York, I was like, you know what? That's it. I don't have to take trades anymore for this week. We are so overextended. I don't want to be participant, a participant anymore. And again, New York moved rather well. Um, the only thing that I'm regretting on this day was I could have easily shorted GBP USD because we have the weekly BC closure right here. And for fun, for the closure, is that a new uh, new PDA? No, it's not. <laughs> it's absolutely not. Um, when I look at this day on the at this level right here on the daily, I am so I don't like the level. I'm like, where where are we going? I need to find an imbalance now. So I start cycling through the levels and I said, okay, oh look, this is a potential red rub now. Let me confirm it with one time frame higher. <gasps> Four day closure of the imbalance, and that's where exactly we stopped. If I go into the M5 and really show you that day, you you might argue that this level is something made up but again uh, this is perfect respect of the bodies and the week right here i don't think it's made up perfect move away and voila the but if i had to pick well on a level created by me manipulating the time frames or something so obvious on the weekly i would have gone with the weekly so technically the best trade for this day apart from getting in london of course is the following it's from this high to this low OTE nothing complicated CB top right there at the consequent encroachment and the break lower into the level right here again time of day principle high formed in London London close forming the low this is one of the few things that is highly highly consistent especially of course for trend days and that was another beautiful 2R potentially even with a little bit of a sloppy entry yeah, even more, it's a 3R. What am I saying? And yeah, this could have been a week where I could have made 10R. Um, am I complaining about 5.9? Absolutely not. Zero losses, Forex wise. I Hopefully, this streak continues. And guys, if you need more information, you know where to find me. I, I do have a private group, it's a paid one, it's not super expensive. And I'm there every single day sharing way more content than this. So if you liked it, you know where to find me. Cheers.